Hello everyone, welcome to Boxing with TT. Um, I think my, my camera might be a little bit foggy, so, you know, I want to say I'm sorry for having you guys on a pool, but, um, you get a little discouraged when you put in your hard work and your time and your effort, and it gets unnoticed, okay, I'm going to just put it out there, right? And on top of that, um, I had to make sure that my, my son was Gucci. Um, I had to do some mommy things, you know, and I had to also get some things together for me mentally as well, okay? So, I am back. Welcome back to Boxing with TT. Thank you for the people who watch, subscribe. Thank you for the comments. Thank you to the people that watch uh, from Reels. And um, I hope y'all having a good day. So... Without any further uh, conversation, let's just get into Mr. Jack DePensy, okay? Now, Jack DePensy's real name is William, okay? His name is William Harris DePensy, all right? And he is born June 24th, 1895, in Manassa, Colorado. And, um, he as he grows, he's between like six old, and he managed his weight from 165 to 205 pounds, okay? He is the ninth child of 11 other siblings. He has older and younger as well. And his father's name is Hiran, and his mom's name is Mary Zilla, and they do marry, and they work odd jobs, and they do mining, and they do a little bit of everything. They got a lot of chillings, you me? Um, at eighth grade, William decides that he wants to leave school so he can start helping with, you know, taking care of home as well. And it, he decides to leave home at the age of 16. And um, he is actually fighting. But he goes by the name of Kid Blackie. Um, and then in 1915, he becomes Jack the Pencil. Now, it's a funny story on how this occurred. Uh, Cured, actually what happened was big bro bernie all right big bro bernie is a prize fighter and he becomes ill on a certain day and his bro was like you know bro like you know you gotta fight and the bro was like i don't feel so good so why don't you just take my spot for me and william is like well kid black it's like you sure and he's like yeah just take my fight just take it for me or whatever. And that's what they do. They basically swapped real quick, real quick. Because bro wasn't feeling well. Well, when Jack, well, when Kid Blackie gets to the arena, nobody is fooled. <laughs> nobody is fooled. Um, I also have to throw in there that Bernie actually took uh, the name Jack from a 19th century boxer. He was like a great boxer. His name was Nona Pearl um, Jack DePensy. So basically, they hijacked that man's name. <laughs> basically, that's what had happened, y'all. They hijacked his name and, you know, they made it do what it did because, you know, they was just giving, you know, his, his, giving him his props in their own way, you know. He's not the first one to be Jack. Um, we had another boxer that was, you know, also jack as well so you know um so even though the crowd knew that this person wasn't jack the Pincy, aka bernie they was like you know what forget it we already came we already here we just won't watch it and the match continues okay so now there is a new jack the Pincy. i don't think i can't find anything of the brother returning back to prize fighting um i don't know what happened with the brother after this uh, i don't know if he survived the illness i have no idea it's like the brother just faded like he trained him on top of this okay so maybe he maybe this is what he wanted his little brother to do maybe he wanted him to box because he trained them he is the reason why i'm gonna see william got into the sports because of his brother and jack William also knew he couldn't sing, he couldn't dance. There really wasn't much that he could do. But in his words, I'll give you a licking. He knew that he could fight. 
okay? So from 1911 to 1916, um, he is traveling from town to town and he is doing mine work, coal mine work. But he also is racking up on his fights as well. He's also looking for people to fight, to just give him a shot to see what he can do. And what do you know? He enters to where Peter Jackson, the Peter Jackson salon is at. And Peter is like, okay, you know, if you want to fight, you know, you can fight here or whatever. That's not a problem with me. And he starts fighting the local talent that comes inside of the boxing arena, okay? So now he is making his rounds and the people are noticing who he is. And at this time, he is in San Francisco. And um, he's also on the East Coast. So basically, he is trying to knock down doors for this to come to the front for it. Because in America, a lot of places still didn't want these boxes to actually box. Um, and then it stated that in 1917, he earns enough reputation to start getting the money that he receives, that he deserves, the booking, the promo, everything that he needs to get. He put, he, he laid down the foundation, okay? Now, if y'all didn't watch, I did do a reaction video to Mr. Jack DePensy. And, yeah, he wasn't no scrub. I see why a lot of people didn't want to get a ring with him. Like, I wasn't getting a ring with him either, okay? So, now we're going to go into his boxing bouts. And on April 17th, 1914, he defeats Young Herman. November 2nd, 1914, he KOs in the first round. One punch Hancock, okay? And November 30th of 1914, he knocked out Billy Murphy in one round as well. January the 15th, he KOs Battling Johnson in one round. Jan uh, February the 9th, 1915, he KOs Joe Lyons in one round. All of these is in one round. This is Y'all know I don't usually say what rounds was the person KO, but pretty much everybody got knocked out in one round. <laughs> um, February the 26th, 1915, he defeats Chief Garbanio. In March 1915, he KO, well, he defeats Rufus uh, Camerino. I don't know if it was a defeat or if it was an expedition match. I'm not so sure. March, um, March uh, 1915, he KOs Johnny Pearson. April 1st, 1915, he KOs Chief Gordon. Not I would Chief Gordon, but get you know, hit that. Not, not Ramsey. September 22nd, 1927, he loses to Gentoni. Now, and then it's also stated that um, December, hold on y'all, wait a minute. December 30th, 1918, during a match with Mr. Ed Gunboat Smith, um, $26,000 was raised for awareness of what was going on in Colombia. I'm not sure what was going on at that time. But it must have been something going on, you know, that was kind of like tragic because they raised, you know, some money for it, which was a nice little raise, 26000 That was good. But in this rematch with Tony, they pulled the okie doke, okay? Because you have to remember, rules were still set, getting set into play with boxing, okay? So this new rule emerges to where... After you KO your opponent, or after the, pay, the, the opponent gets knocked down, you are to return back to your corner. The pissy forgets. And the referee is... The referee is basically trying to play him out. Like, the referee gave Tony more time to get up. So, yeah. And he was, they were trying to say that the referee was trying to, you know, help him out or trying to be irate with, trying to get irate with Mr. Jack, um, the Pensy. But in the video that I watched, I didn't see any of that. I just seen some blatantly just trying to basically get Tony more time. See, what happened was the people didn't really rock with Mr. Um, the Pensy because he didn't serve in World War One. But what had happened was 
he came up with a nice little excuse to be excused. And he said he had a dependable wife that needed him, honey. Yeah. Now, I don't know which one because he was married four times. But, honey, he had a wife to depend on, that depended on him. And he wasn't going no dang going war. So, the folks was like, oh, so he too good to go to war. But he'll say he ain't here box. We don't like him. And he did not um, have a lot of fanfare. And this was, quote, unquote, his retiring match. This was why, quote, unquote, he retired. I couldn't really get the juices of what was the actual retirement. But there's a couple of things that led up to this as well, okay? Now, it's also said on this same match that Mr. Al Capone, that's right, the Al Capone. The don't mess with that one, Mr. Al Capone. Trying to get the match, the rematch fixed. Um, China gave him like two mil for the referee to fix it, but it was already too late. It, it, the match was already taking place, so even if they wanted him to win, he wasn't going to win because the match was already, you know, taking place. Okay. So, um, it's also now this is after he leaves him out of the rank. He never officially gave up boxing. He just gave up in ring boxing. Okay. So this man is a man that jumps many, many, many hats. And when I say many hats, y'all, I literally mean many, many hats. Okay. So bear with me because this right here, this one take a little minute, all right? He um, actually pioneered the live sports events that you guys, that was, that we would, well, not we, but other people was hearing back in the day. So the live radio station actually took place from boxing or any kind of sports, July 2nd, 1921 in Jersey City, New Jersey. Okay, Jersey. Um, and yeah, he pretty much opened the book for this, okay? So by 1936, y'all know he not doing in ring boxing, but this young guy named Max Beer is like, he wants to be the next Jack DePensy, okay? And he makes it his business to get close to the to the king to go um and th in 1936 he actually gets his opportunity to do it and he does it and mr depensy goes on to manage well it didn't say manage but it said promote train and also mentor him okay and max described him as a great friend a lot of a lot of things said that he was just like a guy that just like to be alone. You understand? Know like he was a real cool, calm guy. But when he stepped in that ring, he had a killer instinct. That's what they say. That's what the Swiss is saying. They say he had a killer instinct in the ring, but he was just you know a cool, down earth type of gentleman. Okay. Um. So now after this fight with Tony, honey, Tony racked up a hundred mil. Yes, he racks up a hundred million freaking dollars. And I know Jack was like, I know you freaking lying. Because, baby, I would have went over there and probably punched him on his head all over again. We would have been a part two over there. But he took it like a J and he just was like, all right, whatever. Like, I see how y'all playing. And I think this is why he retired. But it also goes on to um, a little couple of other things coming up, okay? So we're going to take it back to 1908 because this is when his actually debut actually started. But he started out as, don't forget, Kid Blackie, okay? But it stated that he was undefeated from 1908 until 1915, okay? At 1921, he receives a kidney transplant, okay? So um, I think that that took a play on him as well. In 1930, in 1923, Mr. DePensy returns. And when he returned, he returns to defeat a Mr. Uh, James J. Corbett. And they stated that this was the greatest boxing match, okay? This is one of the greatest matches, okay? Um, and then in September 10th, 2000, I mean, September 10th, 1923, he appeared on Tom Cover, honey. Mm -hmm. He appeared on some cover and he did have a couple of managers. Um, he had at least four, but it was this one guy, Mr. Jack Hearns, that took his career and he skyrocketed. it. And this is why we sing what we say and that talk about Mr. Jack uh, Depensy in 2022. Okay. Um, in September the 23rd, 
1926 is when he lost his belt. And this is when the people actually like him. But the, the gag is, okay, the gag is, is that he went and served World War II on the Coast Guard. Mind you, I said that he was unpopular because, from what I read, he was unpopular because he didn't serve. So now that he served, now y'all like him? Whatever. Whatever. Okay? Um, and then it stated that he became like a legend folk out here in them streets or whatever. Because one day, I don't know which wife this was, but one day he come home and his wife is like, Ugh, what's wrong with your face? Why you look like that? And he was like, honey, I forgot the duck. And she like, wait, what you mean? He's like, baby, I forgot the duck. And this line became very, very infamous. Like, it was became like a quote. I mean, think about it. Like, your yeah, Nick come in the house and he all beat up you. Like, Nick, what happened? <laughs> baby, I forgot the duck. Like, you really, you forgot the duck, sir? Like, okay. So, that line made him a legend, folk. Pretty much is what the, sh the sources are saying, okay? He is known to be one of the greatest pound-for-pound -pound boxers. He stated that he set the tone for heavyweight champions. So if you now was in a heavyweight world, you was going to play, and you was going, you was going, you was going to make it do what he do. You wasn't going to be playing with these people because, if I'm not mistaken, his record is 62, 50, and 3. 50 KOs, 3 Fs, if I'm not mistaken, okay? It's also said that instead of him using just one hand, he used both hands, and he, he hit with combos, and it's also stated that um, he had a powerful left hook. Now, do y'all remember when I stated that in one of our other stories that the guy would come in and he would bob and weave like a chicken, and the people laughed at him? Well, this time around, this became a skill because Mr. Jack DePensey was bobbing and weaving in and out that ring. He couldn't get hit. He was smooth. He would dip and dab and get, he get up out that water real, real quick. Okay. So this is the skill that he, you know, set to the tone for the heavyweights because nobody was doing that because you looked like a, a job turkey. <laughs> so nobody really did that. But Mr. Jack did it. Okay. And he did it very well. So, not only did he develop that skill, but he also was quick and rough and tough, and he was a powerful hitter, and he thrived under pressure. Not to say he wasn't cool, but he thrived under pressure. He liked it being under pressure. He liked it um, for bigger men and, and, and taller men to step in his ring so he could knock their behinds down because they was doing the same thing that they was doing to... I would cry a boxer. They was on to Mr. Jack DePensy. Mr. Jack DePensy was getting in a ring with guys that was 10 to 25 pounds bigger than him and also taller than him. And the harder they came, the bigger they came. He was knocking their behinds right on down with a KO. One round. It's okay. So they also says that he has the size of a, 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 a cruiserweight, right? But he had the power of a super heavyweight. Okay. So... Now, in 1940, he has three victories of KO, all right? And then, this is when he officially retired, retired, for real, for real. He retired, and he becomes a referee. And when he comes a referee for boxing, he also becomes a referee for wrestling as well. And it's stated that he dabbled and dabbled in wrestling as well. Um... And then um, he decides to put all of that to the side and he wants to open up a restaurant because it stated as well that he also worked in a restaurant when he was younger. So he opens up a restaurant in New York City and this restaurant remains open for over 30 years, okay? So um, he did that, okay? He publishes seven books and he publishes three autobiographies. In 1940, there's an autobiography. In 1960, there's an autobiography. And in 1977, there's an autobiography, okay? Now, we ain't finished just yet, y'all. Hold on just yet. Hold on, okay? So, it's also stated that he met whoever the president was at the time. He got to meet him. He had a movie role with Mr. Uh, Charlie Champlin. Must have been a big guy. Um, and he also, y'all, they said that he earned as much as Babe Ruth in one boxing match. 
Yeah, all he needed to do was knock you out and he earned more than that was just that right there. Um, and so now, if you don't know, I'm here to let y'all know a little secret stuff that y'all should already know about. When you are a heavyweight champ, they earn a mil, a cool one to two million dollars, all right? But when you also get, um, well, you get two mil and then you get a half of a mil when you are in films and you get all your world use is included, okay? So, yeah, he was definitely, plus on top of that, let's not forget, he still had his restaurant and he still was mentoring he still was refereeing, so he still had his income still flowing in. Mr. Depensy said we might have came up po, but we ain't po no more. Okay. Um, and in 1950, the Associated Press voted that he was the greatest boxer, the greatest fighter of the past 50 cent of the past 50 years. Okay. So yeah, he whatever it is, I got makeup on my hair, y'all. Um, big man, uh, whatever he was doing, he did that real, he did it to the best of his ability, and then he made the other people put some speck on his thing going name, okay? And he was the champ from 1919 to 1926, that was a nice little run that he had, okay? So, um, Mr. Jack Pensy had a brother, another brother by the name of John Pensy. John DePensy decides to shoot his exchange wife, Edna, at 21 years old. Um, and then he committed suicide. And he leaves a two-year-old baby boy by the name of Bruce, okay? Mr. Jack DePensy is the one who they call on to see what is going on. He has to identify the bodies of not only the ex-wife, not only the brother, but his nephew as well. And I'm, I know for a fact that that had to break come to his freaking core. So you mean to tell me I have to come up here and identify not only his ex-wife, but my, 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 my baby nephew too. He's only freaking two years old. Like, and then plus my brother, like, uh, I, yeah, no. So, um, that might have played a little effect on him as well. So, let's jump into these marriages. And I'm so sorry to the family that had to deal with that. That was not... They was doing that type of stuff in 19, uh, 1920s or whatever the case may be back then too. Jesus, so scary. Okay. I guess history is repeating itself. All right. So, let's jump into the marriages, okay? So, his first marriage, I'm going to let y'all know now, I might get the wives a little confused uh, because I'm not sure. I know who two of them is, but I don't know which. I can't put the face with the name with the two other ones, okay? But one of his first wives' name is Maxine, uh, Maxine Gates, and they're already from 1916 to 1919. Very short marriage, but it stated that they only had known each other for like nine months before he popped the question. So, yeah, no. Nine months is not enough time to spend the rest of your life with someone. You don't really know them nine months. Nine months. That's honeymoon stage still. Um, his next marriage was to Estelle Taylor. No relation to Miss the other any other Taylors. And this marriage went on from 1925 to 1930. And then his next marriage was to Hannah Williams. Hannah Williams was from 1933 to 1943. And then his last marriage was to Dana Perel, 1958, until he passes away. He has two children with Mrs. Williams, okay? And one daughter name is Joan Hannah. She is born 1934. And the second daughter name is Barbara Hannah, 1936. Now, when he adopted this next, this child with Miss Dina, her daughter name was Barbara as well. So, <laughs> I want to know how that house was, like, when he was on the phone with baby girl, or when baby girl popped up, like, Barbara, come here. Which one? You're not you. You. My daughter. Which, wait, wait, who? Which one? Who you talking about? Like, yeah, I want to know how that, how that went right there, okay? 
Um, and then he is inducted into the Ring magazine in 1954. He is also um, inducted into the World Boxing Hall of Fame in 1980. He is inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame of 1990. Um, and then at 1998, February the 3rd, you know the little postages for your stamps? Yeah, he was on there. Mr. Depensy was on there, honey. Yeah, Mr. Depensy would listen. Listen. <laughs> he was on there, okay? In 1940, at the age of 45, he stated that, uh, he had the, um, he had the KO three boxing wrestlers, three pro boxing wrestlers, Okay. And then it's also stated that, you know, Fred Fluton, the one we just up finished talking about, even though he was 6'6", he KO'd he KO him in 16 seconds. I'm just saying, like, Mr. Jack DePensy, I don't want no smoke with you. <laughs> Whoever the next De DePensy is, I don't want no smoke at all. I'm gonna mind my business, okay? And then um, they also say in 1932 he had over 100 expeditions. Now you have to remember that in the early stages, expeditions was just to get your foot in the door. Now, as time went on, they started actually giving them, you know, giving us some money or whatever for their time or whatever. So he was doing expedition matches as well. And then they say that in his mid-70s, which I found this very disgusting, but in his mid-70s, Two men tried to rob him while he was closing out his restaurant on the late night. And Mr. DePissy said, Who? Oh, who y'all trying to rob? And beat them men all up and held them men until NYPD came. <laughs> That's just at the age in his mid 70s, y'all. He was still kicking ASSs and doing it all so well still. And then in 1960, um, he. Um, he is a celebrity spokesman in Chicago, and he also is a spokesman for DeVry. Yeah, I remember DeVry. The DeVry Tech Institute. Yeah, that's what he was speaking for. He was speaking for people to go home and go to school. Because, mind you, he dropped out at the 8th grade, okay? So, he didn't want, you know, the people that watched him or, you know, followed him or whatever do the same thing. He knew that education was important. It's just that he had a family to help support you know mom and dad was doing the best that they could do but you know it, it, it he wanted to help out you know nothing wrong with that his other brothers was doing it i'm pretty sure the other you know siblings was helping out how they could too you know every little thing helped with 11 kids that's a lot of kids Sheesh. okay so um in 1983 is when he started developing a lot of serious issues with his heart. And at the age of 83, he passes away, okay? Now, as far as what he brings to boxing is simple fact of he moved boxing from the back doors to the front doors of America. Because once again, America was not keen on boxing. Some places just legit did not like um, the, the idea of the boxes and the damages and they, 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 they just wasn't with none of it. But once Mr. Depensy kept putting his, his, he, he basically took boxing from the East Coast and San Francisco, put it on his back and wore it and made it become to the front. What I think about his career, he did an excellent freaking job. Um, I can understand why he he retired it's like he was being played with and you're not about to play me i've been doing this for over 10 freaking years y'all not about to play me out over no game going tony like no y'all not about to get one up on me like that um and then it stated that he also retired because people were saying that y'all see my face people were saying that he was the man who knocked out god and he just was like real annoyed with it so that's why he left whatever i don't know i wasn't there but <laughs> okay all right um but i think he did an awesome career um boxing career i think that he managed his money very very well um maybe because he was getting sick he understood that he wouldn't be in the game for a real long time so he decided to manage his money better um and whoever 
else was on his team probably helped him manage his money very well. And that's why he was able to keep a, a restaurant establishment open for over 30 years. Um, yeah, he's uh, the way that he shuffled in that ring is look is like in my eyes, I, I, I think Mike Tyson is the freaking GOAT. The hands down legend, like he he is that plus more, okay? After looking at Jack the Pensy, I was like, oh, okay. Okay. If 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 Mike studied him, then I see where he got it from. If Cusco studied Jack, then I understand why Mike was the way that Mike was, because the same way how Mike moves is the same way how Jack moves. Now, the, the kid Blackie name, me no say, I don't know. I got offended. I won't lie. I can't lie to y'all. I will let y'all know. I did get offended by it. Because I was like, why do they call him Black Kitty? I mean, Kitty Black, Black Kitty. Like, Kitty, Kid Blackie. Like, I just didn't understand it. I guess because he wasn't, they, was, they stated that he is Cherokee. That's what they say now. I don't know. But this is the story of Mr. Jack the Pensy. I am back. I'm sorry to keep y'all waiting. Um, I'm going to start putting my cash app link at the bottom so that y'all can help your girl out because, honey, this is not, <laughs> this is not given. I hope y'all guys like the color. I got makeup on my lock, but it's okay. Uh, I'll get it out eventually. And I hope y'all like the look. And if my camera is acting up, I am so sorry. Um, check me out on Instagram, Boxing with TT. Check me out on TikTok, Boxing with TT. And I will see y'all when I see y'all. Peace out.